Okay, well, last lesson, um, I promised you, perhaps promise isn't the right word, but uh, a look at a much harder example using the ideas of uh, discriminant in a, in a question that would be worth quite a few marks uh, in the exam and would tend to be towards the end of the exam as well, probably. So this is a very, very common sort of situation to look at. Now, when you're faced with a question in the exam, you have to look for clues as to what you're being required to do. And there are one or two clues that we can spot uh, in the question to start with. First of all, it talks about finding the range of values of k. Now that suggests we're not going to end up with k equals 1 or k equals 2. We're going to end up with perhaps an inequality, uh, perhaps a region of, of, of values of, of k. So in our mind, let's just remember we might have to use inequalities. Where are the other clues in here? Well, let's look at this phrase here, has no solutions. Now, bells have to ring when you're uh, looking at this, I'm afraid. Um, where have we come across the number of solutions of an equation? We've come across it to do with our friend the discriminant. Now it says here it wants no solutions and we remember that that's when the discriminant is negative. How do we use the discriminant? Well we know the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So therefore I need to know what a, b and c are. You might think oh that's pretty easy but again because of the mixture of k's and x's here you have to be very very careful. So let's just think of our function ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the coefficient of x squared. Well that's easy isn't it because a is clearly 1 here. What about b? b is the coefficient of x, the number in front of x. Well if we look at it, negative 2k is the thing that's in front of x, so b is negative 2k. What about c? Well c is the number on the end but you could also say it's everything else. So because the number on the end is 1 but we've dealt with the x terms so this is now everything else. So c is k plus 1. Right, so the discriminant then. b squared, negative 2k squared, minus 4 times a times c. And that has to be negative. Square negative 2k is positive 4k squared minus 4 times this bracket. So it's minus 4 times k which is minus 4k and minus 4 times 1 which is minus 4. And that has to be negative. So remember our clue inequalities. What have we ended up with? Well, we've ended up with a quadratic inequality. Now, if you were solving that, certainly you would look at that and say, oh, crikey, I can divide by 4 there, so let's divide by 4. So k squared minus k minus 1 is negative. Now, if you think back to the work we've done on quadratic inequalities, you attempt to factorise. Well, after a little bit of thinking, you can see that doesn't factorise. So, do you remember what you have to do? It's our old friend, complete the square. So, it's k, halve the number. Well, there's really a 1 there, isn't there? So, it's a half. Square negative a half, which is a quarter, and take it away again. Let's put this on the other side. I'll write it, I think, on this same line. k minus a half squared is less than one and a quarter. If 
5 over 4. And that's the dangerous one, isn't it? Do you remember? You've got to be really careful here. Do you remember we started doing this by looking at a very simple example, something like x squared less than 9. And uh, a lot of people want to put down x is less than 3. But of course it isn't. It's got to be between negative 3 and 3. So here, carrying this on, when I take the square root, k minus a half will either be less than, now we can't do the square root of 5, we'll have to leave it as a third, but we can do the square root of 4 is 2. And we must put negative root 5 over 2 on that side. So we're nearly there. I want to know the range of values of k. I don't want this negative a half in the way, so I'm going to add a half to each of the three bits of that inequality. So if I add a half to this, I get 1 minus root 5 all over 2, because 1 over 2 is a half. I'm now merging this into a single fraction. That negative a half disappears, giving me k. And then if I add a half to that, I get 1 plus root 5 over 2. So there we, we have this question. And it's not an easy question. Um, don't panic if you can't do this sort of thing first time. You just have to work away at it. And don't worry if you get an answer that looks a bit messy. This will often happen in Core 1. Um, they're not obliged to give you numbers that, uh, that work out easily, I'm afraid, all the time. So watch out for answers that perhaps don't look right but if you're confident in your ability to keep the calculation correct, then you have to be confident in accepting this uh, tricky looking answer. Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.